Hello and welcome back to another video here on So That's Gaming and I'm Laramis. Today we're going to be doing another PlayStation 4 jailbreak video and we're going to get the process uh, if you've watched a previous video or if you already have your PlayStation 4 jailbroken you know that you have to have it connected to your PC or something to have it reinitialize gold hand but today we're going to use a raspberry pi 4 so what you'll need is your raspberry pi 4 a usb doesn't have a, you know type c cable to power on your pi and a network cable now they don't have to be this short they can be the longer ones i just happen to have the shorter ones which is actually makes the whole process a little more convenient and so the other thing you'll need is a usb flash drive if you have not installed gold hand or previously jailbroken your console so let's go over here to the computer go to the web and let's get the list of files that we're going to need here so let's go and hit first playstation 4 as you can see all the title homebrew titles that I have are currently locked, noted with the little lock at the bottom corner. You'll notice the gold hand icon is not here. And yeah, so it's not currently jailbroken. This has been powered on from a fully powered off state. So we're gonna go to the web and get a couple files here. First thing, you'll need to have this Pi PWN. All links for downloads will be available in the description. So we'll need to download this by clicking code here and choosing download it as zip you'll need the raspberry pi imager which you can download for mac ubuntu windows whichever operating system you have we will need a free ssh utility i'm going to use putty in this video so you can download it here and if you haven't already previously installed gold hand to the internal hard drive of your console you'll need the latest version of gold hand which will be down in the asset go down scroll down to the assets span that and you're going to download that which you'll need a unzip utility to you know extract so after we have all that we're going to get our sd card and we're going to get it in our card reader and we're going to open that up pops up right here ignore that because we're going to be formatting this the sd card all over again first thing we do we're going to choose our device in this case we're going to be using the raspberry pi 4 and we're going to choose the operating system we're going to go down here to raspberry pi os other we will choose it from the very top if it's which should be Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64 bit. We're going to choose that and we're going to choose our micro SD card. Make sure you got the correct drive selected so that way you don't format something you don't want to format. So we'll click that. We'll click next. We are going to edit the settings here. And so we're going to set a host name. I'm going to call this the PS4 Pi. Username is PS4. I believe that I set this for PS4 as well for the password. Set up your, your LAN connection so you have Wi-Fi access. Set up your local settings. Come up here to services and choose to enable SSH using a password authentication. And you can check or uncheck these if you want. So we're gonna go and click save, we're gonna click yes, and then yes, and we're gonna let that write. It shouldn't take very long. Just note that when writing your SD card, depending on the quality and the speed rating of your micro SD card, will determine how long it takes to do the whole writing process. And you really shouldn't cancel the verify process just in case it got written corrupted or something but uh in this case we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and cancel this verification step just yeah because we don't want to wait any longer so we're gonna cancel that and it's going to go and write the other user uh data stuff that we set up previously so we're done with that so now we can remove we can, we're done with the Pi Imager, so we're going to remove the SD card. 
and we're gonna reinstall the SD card. And you'll see it creates this boot file system folder here. So we're gonna open that up. And then the PI PWN that we downloaded, we're gonna go and open up that. And we're gonna copy the PPPWN folder right there to the root of the SD card. So now we are officially done with that. Now, remember, if you need to make a, if you haven't installed Golden Hen yet on your PS4, you'll need a flash drive with the Golden Hen bin at the root of the USB drive. And the USB drive needs to be formatted FAT32 or XFAT. In my case, I already have Golden Hand installed, so I will not be using that. So we're done with the SD card. Let's go and remove that. Next, we're gonna take our SD card out and we're gonna install it into our Raspberry Pi. This is all so thrilling and exciting. So we're gonna be connecting two different things. We got, uh, we're, we're gonna, depending on how you wanna do it, you can do it either way. Uh, I'm gonna plug these into the back of my PlayStation 4 right here and then they'll be plugged directly into the Pi. The purpose of this is so that when you power on your PlayStation 4, it'll automatically power on the Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and get these connected up. There's a network cable and we're going to plug in the USB and make sure it's oriented the correct way. Now allow our Raspberry Pi to boot. Next thing we need to do is we have Putty here. We're gonna wait for that to fully boot. All right, so the next step is we're gonna log on to the Pi and it's gonna be PS4 Pi. That's the host name we set during the setup, dot local. And this will pop up, we're gonna say yes, we're gonna accept the certificate. And here is the login, which we set, remember, as PS4 and PS4. And we're logged in. What's handy about all of this is the release from the GitHub. Let's go back over here. If we go over here and scroll down, this is everything that we need to type in. So we can just select this where we can click copy, right? And then we're gonna go back over to our window here. We're just gonna right click and it'll automatically paste all that in there. Just hit enter and just let it do its thing. Uh, depending on how fast your internet connection is and what uh, other factors will determine how long this takes. But we're gonna just let this run and we'll be right back. All right, well that process took about five, 10 minutes, depending on the your spot, the Raspberry Pi model you choose, the speed of your SD card, the speed of your internet connection, all that kind of good stuff. Now we have a few options here we gotta look at. Do you wanna enable the option to use Python, which is slower, because now there's a new C++ method of running the exploit. So we're gonna say no, because it's slower. Uh, next, do you want to install the FTP server? Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, so no. Do you want to set up Samba Share? Not right now. Do you want to use Golden Hen if it is available? Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you want to change the PPOE username and password? No. Remember these, the username PPP and user PPP. So no, we're not going to change those. Do you want to detect the console shutdown and restart PPPWN? Uh, you can, I guess. Uh, I guess we can detect that. Uh, do you want the console to connect to the internet after PPPWN? Yes, why not? This is cool. That is actually a neat feature. So what that means, since we're using a PPPOE on the, pl uh, the PlayStation 4, that means we're not really connecting to the internet because we don't really use a PPPOE in your house. Well, you might, I don't know. But for me personally, that's not how it's set up. So that way it'll only connect to the Pi and the Pi will actually pass off its internet connection directly to the console. Really neat. 
Uh, let me see. Are you using a USB Ethernet adapter? No. This is if th this means it's going to use the actual uh, Ethernet port um, on the Pi. So no, we, we we're using the port. Uh, do you want to try and detect if Golden Hen is running and skip running PPPWN if found? Sure. Why not? Uh, do you want to run PPPWN verbose mode? This will allow, uh, yeah, we're going to do that because if we log on through the web website onto the Pi, you it'll allow you to watch the progress of what it's doing. So well, why not? Uh, would you like to change the timeout? Uh, no, we're not going to, we're going to leave the default. Would you like to change the firmware version being used? Default is 11. No, because my console is currently running version 11. Let's see interface list um would you like to change the pi lan interface no i do not do you want to use the original ipv6 address that we used in pppwn yes the reason for this is because it it, it it's able to flash and um run the exploit quicker uh, do you choose do you want the Pi to act as a flash drive to the console no would you like to change the host name default is pppwn Sh uh, no we'll leave it pppwn there we go it's gonna finish that now we go now it's rebooting all right, so here we are. After you restart, or after the Raspberry Pi gets done rebooting, if you go to your browser, and since it changed the host name to pppwn.local, if you type that into your browser, this is what pulls up. And these are the settings we changed and set up during the setup. Um, Verbose is right here. The open the event logger will show you everything that's going. So let's go ahead and open that. You can see everything that's technically going on. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to the res to the PlayStation, and we're going to set up our internet connection. We're going to go down to network. We're going to choose connect to internet, set up internet connection, use a LAN cable, custom, and we're going to choose PPPoE. This part takes it just a moment. There you go. PPPoE, the username and password that was set through the setup, next, automatic, automatic, and do not use, go. So, we can go ahead and go back. And now, if we go back to our browser, here it is, it's currently waiting for the, the console, okay. There's, it's running stage one. And it's, this is running on the Pi automatically. It's gonna go through its whole ordeal automatically. And it's restarting. Let's go to the console. You see LAN cable not connected. Still says stage zero. And so this is what's running on the Pi automatically. And because when you power on the console, it automatically starts running this right off the bat. You don't have to do anything. Just sit and wait. And that's about the worst part about it. See, the scanning for corrupt objects, that's the part that needs to uh, be successful at the 0x000. If it's successful, then it goes on. So right now, it's just, it's restarting. Nothing going on here. Still waiting for the exploit to finish. And like I said, this could take a couple of times and hopefully as they improve the coding on it, it will, well, eventually become successful. But let me just show you, I'm currently not exploited here. See where the the uh, lock button or symbol is on here, showing that it's not currently ready to go. The exploit's still running in the background here. Oh, uh, looks like it got past the corrupt objects. So now we're, it's running additional scripts. And then you'll eventually cannot connect to the network. Gold hand appears. And if you see just right there on Cora, the little lock symbol disappeared. Shows that gold hand has been loaded and we're done. It took a lot longer than I would have liked, but at least I know there's nothing wrong with the exploit on this PlayStation or this uh, 
the PlayStation 4 and on the Raspberry Pi. So there we go. Just to show you that it does work. There you are. It just loads right up. And it actually has internet access as well, too. So that's kind of cool. Here you are. Boom. Right at homebrew here. So I'm going to close that. And yeah, we're good to go. So let's show we can launch a retail game real quick. And there we are. All the way into Korra here. There we are. We're good to go. Well, that took far longer than I would have liked it to. So, um, yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it doesn't look pretty cause you're always going to have this device connected to your console, but I mean, at least that you can shut off your console and then boot it up. The pile will automatically detect whether or not golden hen is running on your console. If not, it'll run the exploit. And once it gets up running, it'll stop running the exploit. So it did take longer than we would have liked, but in the end, we still got there. So we have more videos to come on the jailbreaking. If there's any other videos or ideas or projects you want me to cover regarding the PlayStation 4, be sure and let me know in the comment section below, and then we'll look into it and we'll make a video for you guys. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Ring the little bell icon, get notified when I upload new videos, and we'll see you in the next project. Thanks for watching.